And welcome back to Everyman Driver. I'm Alex LaFries coming to you from the 2013 Inland Northwest Motorcycle Show. I'm here with Dale Stevens of Empire Cycle. Empire Cycle is a specialty European motorcycle shop in Spokane. And Dale, tell us a little bit about the Triumph brand for those that don't know. We're both wearing the shirt. Well, Triumph has, is the most or longest consistently produced motorcycle in the world. Started production in 1903. Now, Triumph has been through a series of different owners, and today uh, the owner is John Fleur, deeply committed to the motorcycle industry, deeply committed and an enthusiast to, and passionate about the motorcycles he builds. I'm sitting on a Triumph Thruxton 900, which is a, a cafe racer style uh, brand of bike. Uh, it's a 900cc motorcycle uh, built for the sport enthusiast in mind. Awesome. Well, there is a gorgeous uh, selection of Triumph motorcycles here, and we'll go through and show you a few. So Dale, we're standing here in front of the venerated Triumph Bonneville. Now tell us both about this bike and a little bit about its history, but also what's new in the last year or two. So let's talk about what, what's probably the most well-known Triumph of any kind, which is the Bonneville. The Bonneville has been built since the 50s. This is our 2013 Bonneville, made to look like the classic Bonnevilles of the 50s and 60s, but yet with all the technology that modern day enthusiasts would want to see. We've got fuel injection, we've got a, a, a air-cooled, oil-cooled motor, wonderful suspension, great electronics. It's just the bike for any enthusiast to ride, but just with the classic look. Absolutely, and uh, the theme of Triumph these days seems to be, like you said, creating that classic look, but you've got all of the modern conveniences. It's almost like a pro-touring muscle car. No, that's exactly correct. Triumph is, is again, um, committed to that classic look Triumph, but then we also have the modern cruisers and the adventure bikes that we can show as well. So now we're standing here in front of the Triumph Scrambler 900, and this bike has quite a venerated history in one form or another. Sure, the Triumph Scrambler is a, essentially a Bonneville, that was made to also be able to do dirt. I call it the Steve McQueen special because anybody that's ever know, that ever saw anything about Steve McQueen, The Great Escape, the On Any Sunday movie, kn knew and know how special Triumph was to Steve McQueen. It was the first motorcycle he ever owned. Story goes like this with Steve McQueen. Steve was working on, uh, on one of the uh, movies in the 60s the producer of the movie had bought, purchased a Triumph. Um, he had wrecked the Triumph. His wife was not happy with that. And the producer of the movie stole, uh, sold the Triumph to Steve McQueen. And from that day forward, Triumph and Steve McQueen were one and the same. Now, like the Bonneville, this too has fuel injection with the fake carbs, if you will? Absolutely. It, it has everything that the, that the classic Bonneville has, but it's got the upswept pipes so that you can take it off-road. It's got a little sturdier frame. Um, you can certainly get the, uh, the, 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 the motor cover for the bottom of it um, that will work very nice. You can absolutely take this on the dirt. You can take it on the street. You can take it anywhere you want. It's just an all-around great motorcycle. And because of its heritage and because of Steve McQueen, it happens to be my favorite. Now we're standing here in front of a couple of really gorgeous looking cruisers from Triumph. And how long has Triumph been in sort of the cruiser market? And you know what makes them different from say a Harley Davidson? Well, Triumph, as the, as the cruiser market started to grow in the US, uh, Triumph entered the cruiser market in the late 90s, very early 2000s. And uh, they've continued to grow. Um, Triumph sells three models of cruisers. We have uh, the one on the far there, we have the American, uh, we have the Thunderbird, and then we have our, our, our largest cruiser, which is called the Rocket 3. Um, 
The thing about the Triumphs are they're very well priced for what you get. Again, fuel injected motors. Um, on two of the cruisers, you get liquid cooling. Um, and on the, our base cruiser, the American, it's a oil cooled, air cooled, using old aircraft technology motor. They're wonderful cruisers. They're very well priced. Uh, they're known for what the classic Triumph uh, Bonneville is known for. Lots of good power, lots of good usable power, um, and lots of oomph from the get-go. You, you, you turn that throttle on and it's going to go. Also, one thing that I love about these Triumph cruisers is, like it or not, when you ride a Harley, it tends to send a certain image. And I feel like with these Triumphs, it, you're getting, you know, it's, it's something a little different. You're going, I'm not just going to have a Harley like everybody else, I'm going to have a cruiser. But I'm going to send that little kind of European flair of a statement. Um, really like these things a lot. No, I agree. I think I think the cruisers keep a classic cruiser look, but there is. It's just something different. It it uh, you know um, Harleys are great motorcycles. Triumphs are great motorcycles. They're the two consistently most produced company uh, bikes in the in the world. Um, but with Triumph, you just get a little bit different. Not everyone has a Triumph. Well. We will finally move to one of my personal favorite segments of motorcycles, the adventure bikes. We're now standing here in front of the Triumph Tiger XC. Now this is an adventure bike, and for people that aren't as familiar with this segment of bike, what is it all about? It's about the ability of taking a motorcycle off-road, having a very competent on-road motorcycle, and being able to take it on, on logging roads. Uh, trails, uh, uh, anywhere you want on the dirt. Now we're not talking about motocross here, we're not going up single track, we're not jumping it, but we're able to take it on logging roads. We're, go we're able to go out and, and seek and see the wilderness. It is by far the fastest growing segment in motorcycle industry. Um, uh, Triumph, BMW, KTM, Moto Guzzi. Uh, there's lots of manufacturers now that have joined this marketplace. And it really comes from the original Dakar racing, where the 6,000 mile, and at one time North African desert race, now it's the South American desert race. And that whole concept of putting a competent street bike in the dirt. And it is, it is by far the funnest thing I get to do. From our shop at Empire Cycle, we host adventure bike rides all summer. We tend to host four or five day rides where we try and do 75 miles street, 75 miles dirt, and, uh, and then we also do some overnight rides. But adventure biking, it, it's about being able to go explore. And that's the whole thing. It, you could almost call it explore biking because you're really trying to build a bike that can get you off-road in a competent manner, but yet it's still a 120 mile an hour street bike if you want it to be. Well, people often think that you know, if you want to go across a country or something that, you know, you do it on a Harley with a sleeping bag on the back. But these are the type of bikes that you travel across the country, if not around the world. And they literally can go anywhere. In fact, I saw the uh, Ewan McGregor on that Discovery Channel show or whatever, took a couple of BMW GSs similar to this type of a bike and really rode around the entire world. So if you're looking to go anywhere, do anything, so to speak, this segment of bike is going to be your best bet. Oh, absolutely. Um, Americans going to Europe, uh, Europeans coming to America, uh, Asians coming to America, all over the world. I met a gentleman last summer who uh, was from France, and he shipped his Triumph Tiger over from France and was on a six-month holiday in the United States exploring the West. Um, it was something he had never seen before, and he just wanted to explore it. And the last trip he took, and where I bumped into him at, is we were on our way up to the Arctic Circle to Prudhoe Bay and uh, we bumped into him there. But uh, the, this Tiger is, is completely outfitted. So it's got the bags that are capable of being on the off-road, so they're, they're durable. It's got the skid plate underneath the, the, uh, that really protects that motor from bumping into rocks and logs and things that you would expect to see on the dirt. It's got the road, it's got the engine guards that will protect it from the brush. Um, on, on this bike, we've also put the little thicker grips that you might find on a dirt bike. They're heated, uh, so uh, you get your hands very warm. We put a little bit larger windshield on it than the stock windshield, so you get a little bit more air protection. And of course, uh, adventure bike folks, those folks that are enthusiasts in adventure bike, tend to ride a lot at night. 
So the thing about adventure bikes also you'll find is they've got very good front lights. And in this case, we've actually put additional lighting on them, PIA lights, that really, really, really make that night open up today. Well, these modern motorcycles really are unbelievable. I mean, this has cruise control, anti-lock brakes. Many of the features that you didn't find in cars 20 years ago are now actually on motorcycles. So Steve, I want to thank you so much for your time. Make sure to thank Empire Cycle in Spokane for showing us all of these great motorcycles. For Everyman Driver, I'm Alex LaFreese. Thanks so much for watching.